everyone thanks for coming out here today we really do appreciate you thank you for supporting our channel and thanks for staying tuned to our news and remember we are here to keep you updated with the latest and most um, authentic um, happenings in our country nigeria and um, the news we have before our decks today is regarding erufai and his plans for 2023 and we'll get we'll go straight into the details of the news but before we do if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel please do click on the subscribe button down below and do give us a thumbs up hit on the like button thank you very much we really do appreciate you so right let's go straight um into the content of the news erufai and his plans for 2023, the making of an accidental vice president. When Nasir Erufai wrote his book, The Accidental Public Servant, he more or less laid down the ground rule for what he will do and where he will be in the future. The book equally signaled his desire to get into passion politics. Since then, everything he has wished from has come to pass. For this reason, Erufai's achievements are anything but accidental. Till date, Erufai has not only survived all the fight he got into and has been beaten by his foes to stand still, he also has shown great foresight in choosing his friends. Erufai courted Atiku to get to Obasanjo, then dumped him for Obasanjo. He would later dump PDP for APC. In fact, the man has shown rare capacity for political survivor. In less than two decades, Erufa has turned himself from a professional man, which is a quantity surveyor engaged in private practice to a technocrat and consummate politician. He made his mark with his first foray into public service as Director General, Bureau of Public Enterprise. He later traded a position for Minister of FCT. He excelled in both positions in those offices under Obasanjo's regime. Physically diminutive, brash and combative, his critics have accused Erufai of having Napoleon's complex. In his book, The Accidental Public Servant, Erufai gave himself more than deserved credit for frustrating Obasanjo's third term bid. When the book came out, Obasanjo mocked Erufai for seeking cheap publicity. Obasanjo was not entirely wrong. Till date, no critically acclaimed book on Obasanjo's third term bid has mentioned Erufai as playing key role in stopping Obasanjo's experiment with self-perpetuation. However, for abandoning Atiku and writing a kiss and tell book about Obasanjo, his critics have accused Erufai of being a serial backstabber. This allegation is baseless because in politics, there are no permanent friends or enemies. Obsessed about his roots, Erufai wears his Fulani identity like a badge of honor. Not long ago, he admitted paying Fulanese in Kaduna State to stop killing non Fulanese. He's also warned other tribes quarreling the recent Fulani high headedness to be mindful of their infamous long memory and their patience for vengeance. I believe much comments are beneath the office of a respected public servant. Moreover, in the last Kaduna State Guba election, Erufai acted insensitively when he opted for a Muslim. Muslim ticket, a political pairing unheard of in the history of multi religious states. Because Erufai's is media savvy and deft at managing his public image, he has continually swimmed against the current of public opinion. So, despite his tendency for carelessness, ultraness, Erufai's 2023 vice presidential candidacy for APC is good as sealed. Moreover, Erufai has Buhari's ears and is said to be one of his most trusted advisors. He's also probably the brightest and most capable Fulani man currently in public service. In addition, since he can't be easily cowed or outsmarted, a section of the North see him as the man best to pair with a Southern presidential candidate. Meanwhile, going by his anti-corruption stance, 
Erufa is more in the Buhari mode as a leader than most in the president's inner Kaku's circle. Few months ago, Erufai fled up when Tinubu suggested he should be his presidential running mate in 2023. Erufai not only frowned at the idea, he accused Tinubu publicly of being irredeemably corrupt. Though Erufai has declared his vice presidential interest early, yet no other Northerner in APC has shown interest. This is a fair indication that the North has put its house in order. It also shows that the North knows the limit of political expendency. It is equally instructive to note that if the Northern oligarchy is behind Erufai, money will not be an object. However, Erufai conversing for support for his VP ambition without an identifiable Southern pairing with him demonstrates the profound arrogance of the North, an arrogance stemming from its population size and related voting strength, both which make the North believe it can win the presidential election with marginal support from the South, while no other tribe from the South can win the presidential election without massive support from it. Hence, Erufai's early declaration of his vice presidential ambition not only amounts to putting the cat before the horse, it equally an effort to turn the tenets of presidency system on its head. Given that technically it is the duty of a presidential aspirant who has won the party's ticket to pick his VP. This means the North is trying to abuse the practice of presidential system by creating the concept of a vice presidential candidate in waiting. In other words, the North is insisting on imposing a vice presidential candidate on a yet to be known Southern presidential contender. Wow. So my people, we all know that um, this um, 2023 presidential election is just um, by the corner. Um, and um, a few people have shown their interest. We know um, Atiku um, is is someone that is pushing forward as well. It's coming up under the um, People's Democratic Party. But what's quite shocking about all of this we've read now is that um, normally it's the presidential candidate that, that has to be known first. Then the presidential candidate will pick his vice to say, okay, this person um, is flying with me. We're going together. But shockingly, that's not the case. I don't know what these northerners are up to in our country. They don't want to leave the seat of um, presidency. They want to continue ruling Nigeria, and which we don't want. We've we'll been talking about um, um, restructuring. We've been talking about um, zoning as well. Let this um, uh, um, let presidency go to other parts of the country, other region, not just the northerners. Now, Erufa is from the north. He is uh, um, already showing his interest as a vice president. We've never seen that before where there is a vice presidential candidate. It's quite shocking and it's funny as well. But Nigerians, that is what they are up to. I don't know what he's planning anyway, but uh, we'll keep our eyes and our ears open to see what these people are up to. Because if a southerner is coming out as a presidential candidate, he is meant to pick, um, choose whosoever is going to run with him as his vice but now it was stated that what Erufa is doing is putting the cart, uh, um, is putting the, the cart before the horse, which is not done that way. We've not seen the, the presidential candidate, but we're already seeing the vice president, uh, the vice presidential candidate. Nigerians, um, let's hear your take, let's hear your view on this. Northerners, we don't know what they are up to, what they are planning. It looks like they don't want to get their hands off um, the government. They want to remain there in full capacity. They've ruled Nigeria for a long time. But um, what we are saying is that let it go around, let it go to other parts um, of the country. We know it's 2023, but um, preparations are going on at the moment. So people, please leave your take, leave your comment down below in the comment section. I want to say thank you once again to everyone that have subscribed. Please, if you haven't yet subscribed, click on the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up till I come your way again. It's bye for now and God bless.